Hello, and welcome to the second day of our study of 2 Thessalonians. Today we're on day two, and we're going to continue to look at the whole book of 2 Thessalonians, not focusing in on any one chapter yet. This is our overview, remember. But before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us. Open our minds. Holy Spirit, touch our hearts today with the things that you would have us to learn from your word. Help us to learn to show ourselves approved unto God. Be with us as we do this study, Father. And I ask that you shine your light on what we're studying today. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And every time we get into your word, the light that's cast on our path gets bigger and bigger and brighter and brighter. So we see more and more and more of our path the more we ingest your word. Father, I'm asking you right now to be with every one of the people that are tuning in and doing this study with me. I thank you for each and every one of them, and I ask you to prosper them in their way in everything that they do. Give them the tools that they need to go through life and to stand firm for you. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, your Son. Amen. So today we're continuing with our overview, and we're not done looking at people. Yesterday we looked at Paul. We learned a lot about Paul. We gleaned several things. So now this time, today, I want you to go through the observation worksheets again, read through everything. Don't skim. Here's the thing. By the time we get finished with this entire study, you are going to know the book of 2 Thessalonians. Some of it will be in your committed to your memory and you won't even realize it because we read it over and over and over again from beginning to end. So today we're going to look at people again. We're going to look at the recipients of the letter this time. Now you're going to want to use a different color, maybe a different symbol also, from what you use to mark the author. Be sure to mark all the pronouns for the recipients such as you, your, who, and any other synonyms like brethren and beloved. Now, after you get through with that, and I'm going to very quickly run through it here, you'll see how I've chosen to mark the recipients. We're going to read 2 Thessalonians again. And remember when we pulled out the chart people in 2 Thessalonians yesterday? We're going to do the same thing today with the recipients of the letter. Remember, we're going to be asking the five W's and an H kind of questions that uniquely describe the recipients. So here's a list of some of the questions we're going to ask ourselves. And you come up with other questions, ask them. You can't question the word enough. Dig into it. Who are the recipients? How are they described? And what are their circumstances? What event happened that caused Paul to be concerned about them? What is their relationship to Paul? Have they ever seen him, been with him, or heard from him before this letter? Remember, when you fill out this chart to use the same color that you use to mark the recipients on your observation worksheets, and to use the words directly from the text, and remember to note the chapter and verse that everything's coming from. Now remember, we're just looking for the obvious facts. We're not looking to try to dig in and find anything uh, that's hidden at this point. We're just looking at the obvious facts. Once you have all of these facts recorded on on your people in 2 Thessalonians chart, look at your chart and evaluate it. Did you see anything about the Thessalonians that would help you to figure out the historical setting of 2 Thessalonians? Anything that we haven't put in there already? If so, go ahead and add that to your 2 Thessalonians at a glance chart under historical settings. Now, when you mark the text and you listed the answers to the questions about the author and the recipients, 
you did discover a few facts about the historical setting. Do you realize what just happened? So many times people think the only way to understand the historical setting of a book is to read commentaries about it. They aren't aware that very, by very carefully observing the text, you can figure it out for yourself. Have you ever thought about people in other countries? They don't have commentaries in their own language, so they don't have other resources. How wonderful it is to realize that they can actually study their Bibles and glean all of this information just by the study, just like you're doing here. You didn't have to buy a commentary and read it in order to figure this out, did you? You figured it out just by studying one piece at a time of information from the text itself. It's always a good idea to have a notebook or notebook paper in your binder that you're using as we do this study because you're going to want to take notes. Now that we've gone over all three chapters of 2 Thessalonians several times, you'll notice that each chapter has a little bit of a different theme from the other chapters. So what kind of a theme have you come up with for chapter one? How about chapter two? And then about chapter three? There's no right or wrong answer here. Again, this is what is revealed to you as you study. This is completely personal. I'm not going to tell you what I came up with as those themes because I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, my answer might be wrong, must be wrong because it differs from hers. You know what? Mine might be the one that's wrong. I actually have done this study a couple of different times and I came up with a different theme for chapter three the second time I did the study than I did the first time I did the study. So I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the word is alive and it is for us where we are at the moment. I'm at a different place going through it the second time than I was the first time I went through it. And so the Holy Spirit pointed something out to me that was a little bit different from what I learned the first time. This is why when we actually do in-depth studies, it's a good idea to go back a few years later and do it again, because what we get out of the, the uh, book could be totally different than the first time, or maybe not, maybe not totally different, but there could be some major differences because we're at a different place and now we need a new revelation from the same word. That's called Rhema. So look at the second chapter, verses 5 and 15. Does that tell you anything about when Paul wrote the letter? And can you tell what happened that might have prompted Paul to write the letter? Write that down. Now looking at that, why do you think Paul ended the letter the way he did, especially in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 17. Let me give you a few cross-references you can go check. 1 Corinthians 16, 21, Galatians 6, 11, and Colossians 4, 18. Now that we've done this study of the recipients, why do you think Paul wrote this letter? What was his purpose? Put that on your 2 Thessalonians at a glance chart if you've come up with his purpose for writing. This has been a great lesson. I hope you all are getting a lot out of this. I would love to have discussions with you. You can go to my Facebook fan page. It's Marcy Fessler page. Or, and we can start a discussion of this study. If I get enough interest, will I, I'll actually start a Facebook group specifically for this study. I would love to discuss with you what you're learning. I love learning from other people and gaining new insight because I see scripture through somebody else's eyes. But what I'm really excited about is the fact that I know that you are learning the Word of God for yourself. You're not sitting in a pew being told what it says, being told what it means, but you're actually discovering it for yourself. And that's so exciting for me because when I realized for myself that I could do that, wow, I just started devouring the word with this new way of study. And anytime I'm in any church, my own or visiting somebody else's church, I always 
apply what I've learned doing this inductive Bible study to what the pastor is teaching, to what the teacher is teaching, whoever's up there preaching. I don't ever take their word for it. Well, this is what this means, or this is when it happened, or this, these were the circumstances that were going around. If it impacts me to where I feel like I need to check this out for myself, I do. I check it out for myself and make sure that everything that was I was being taught jives with what the Word of God says. I'm so excited for all of you, and I'm excited for myself. Go join my Facebook page or, or like my Facebook fan page, Marcy Fessler page. I'm excited to get to know you. Please introduce yourself to me. And let's get started in a discussion group. Have a blessed day.